Why do boomers hate pop music? This is the title of a video that Rick Beto recently did. I think that's how you say his last name. B-E-A-T-O. He's a music producer, and he had some pretty interesting insight about what it is that a lot of people have against pop music. Not just boomers, but Gen X and even millennials. Some of them just don't like some of the new songs that are out there right now, especially on the Spotify Top 10 or whatever. Before I get too far into this video, I want to say that I don't necessarily hate all new music. I am very much a Gen X person, and I love music of the 70s and the 80s, but I like a lot of EDM. And recently I heard a song that I really liked. It was on Howard Stern. It was Harry Styles doing Adore You with his band. I thought it was fantastic. The writing was good. The melody and harmony was really nice. There were little nuances in the song that I enjoyed. And then I listened to the song's official video, and it was played at a different tempo. It was a little slower, and it was a little cleaned up, I guess, or a lot cleaned up, production-wise. And it's not nearly as interesting as the live performance that I heard. I think that's kind of where it's at. Now, I'm going to take this from a DJ's perspective as well. I have been observing audiences respond to music for most of my life. And what I can tell you is, yeah, Rick might have a point where it could be a repetitive beat thing. Having said that, I don't think that a lot of older generations necessarily dislike a repetitive beat. I mean, think about disco 4-4 four, four time. That was pretty repetitive. And even house music or techno, a lot of repetitive beats. So maybe that's not really what it is. When I first heard auto-tune, it was Cher's Believe. Rick mentions this in his video. Talks about the song a little bit. That was in 1998. That was 22 years ago. And I thought it was pretty interesting. I mean, Cher's Believe isn't a bad song. It wasn't my favorite song. I didn't run out and buy it and listen to it over and over again. But I didn't hate it. That auto-tune thing was pretty interesting, though. And now it's everywhere. For 22 years, I've been hearing auto-tune. I think that has a lot to do with it. It's not only that the beats are repetitive, it's that you never hear any new sounds. I'm thinking about the music that was popular when I started high school, which was in 1986. And the music that was popular when I got out of high school, which was 1990, it was very different music within a four-year period of time. If you played me a song from 2010 that I'd never heard before, and a song that was released last week that I'd never heard before, I don't know that I could tell you the difference because there aren't that many new sounds out there that define a song from 2010 and a song from 2020. Yeah, when everything sounds the same and it sounds the same for many, many, many years, I think older generations get really bored because we're jaded. We had new sounds constantly. I love watching YouTube reaction videos. And I watch the ones that I think are sincere or the most sincere as possible. Some of them, I can tell that they're just trying to get views and they're not really genuinely reacting to a song. But there are a few out there that I watch quite a bit. Recently, somebody reacted to Yes, Owner of a Lonely Heart. They had never heard it before. And I was really excited because I loved the song. They listened to it and they were so not impressed. They thought it was cheesy because of the sounds in it. I go back and think about the first time I heard that song. It blew me away because I'd never heard anything like it before. That was an 8-bit sampler. The guitar in that is an 8-bit sampler. There's drum loops in it. There's horn stabs that was like science fiction. And the melody is really nice on that song. But the sounds I was hearing in the song... What the hell was that? That was completely wackadoodle, other world stuff. Listening to it now, yeah, there's better technology out there for drums and for, you know, different samples. I mean, the samples don't sound any different than live these days, but back then the samples sounded kind of rough. It was cool. Those were the nuances that really attracted me to the song. The reason I still love the song today. But yeah, somebody listening to it now for the first time might lack perspective because they're used to hearing samples all the time. 
and they sound perfect. And why would you make a sample sound anything less than perfect? Those imperfections were fun. So, I don't know. I don't think that older people hate pop music as much as older people are bored with it. If it was changed up a little more, if there was a new sound that would come out every once in a while, like a drastic new sound, then maybe it would be more interesting. They, maybe if they changed the tempo up, changed the drum machines up, and really came up with some super catchy hooks, and didn't overproduce stuff like they did Harry Styles' Adore You as far as I'm concerned, I think it might be more interesting for the older generation. I don't know, just a vlog today. I know I haven't done a lot of videos, I've been busy. I've uh, been working on the car and doing some other things. I will do more videos soon, though, so stay tuned. Thanks for watching, guys. We'll see you soon. Let me know what you think in the comment section, by the way. Stay safe, be careful, take care of each other, practice, and enjoy.